So welcome to our instructional video on how to use an AED, or a defibrillator, or even defib for short. I should probably start by explaining what an AED actually is. So an AED, or an Automated External Defibrillator, is a device that delivers an electric shock to a person if it's required. What's important to note is that if a shock is not required, the machine will not let you do it. You can press that button as much as you like, it will not deliver an electric shock, so don't panic. So before we go through how you actually use an AED, we probably need to understand a little bit about how the heart actually works. For those of you who have seen the previous films in this series, you'll hear me describe the human body as a pressurized plumbing system and an electrical system. Contraction of the heart is initiated by electrical activity. An electrical impulse comes in at the top of the heart and a message, a bit like a relay race, is passed all the way down to the bottom where it then initiates the contraction and blood is pushed circulating around the body. When a person has suffered a cardiac arrest, one of the things that could have gone wrong is there is an interruption in that electrical pathway. The heart, instead of beating, actually goes out of sync. It starts to shake or fibrillate. That means you haven't got a pulse, so you would have no blood pumping around your body, feeding your vital organs. So how does an AED actually work? Well, what it does is it delivers an electric shock to your body. It's important to remember, you're not trying to restart the heart with a defibrillator, you're actually stopping it. What we're trying to do is reset the electrical activity in your heart. In the same way as you would your computer, you turn it off and you turn it back on again, and hopefully it's all back into sync. So I've just explained how an AED actually works. I probably now need to explain where you'll find one. Across the UK, we have a system called PAD, which stands for Public Access Defibrillators. These are AEDs that are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to the general public. These PADs, Public Access Defibrillators, are located anywhere where there are large groups of people. That could be a shopping centre, a train station, football stadiums, supermarkets, or a bus station. You'll recognise them by being in a yellow locked box. They should have a green sign over them. It's a heart with a lightning bolt that goes through it. You can find your local pad by going on www.defibfinder.uk. But don't panic if you don't actually know where the closest pad is to your location. When you ring 999, that emergency call handler will direct you to the closest available. They will also give you the combination code to be able to get into the lockbox. What's really important to note, that if you are doing chest compressions, you do not stop. You send somebody else to go and get an AED. If there is no one else, then you just stay doing chest compressions. So the 999 emergency call handler will ask you if there is somebody there available to go and get the closest public access defibrillator. If there is, they will give the location and the combination code to be able to get it out of the lockbox. Charlotte, can you go and get the AED? When the second rescuer returns with the AED, what's really important to remember is it cannot get in the way of your chest compressions. You need to stay on the chest and let them work around you. They need to remove any clothing they have covering their chest area because the pads have to stick to skin. If you're unable to remove the clothing easily, there will be a big pair of scissors in the box that you can use to cut the clothing. As soon as you open an AED, it should turn on. If it doesn't, you press the big green button. Like I said, this is really simple. A huge advantage to using an AED is it will now tell you what to do. As it opens, it tells you to attach the pads to the patient's bare chest. Look on the pads, there will be a diagram of where those pads stick. Again, you are gonna to have to work around the person doing the chest compressions. Remember, stay on that chest. Now that you have the pads attached to the chest, just listen to the machine. It will tell you to stop chest compressions as it's analyzing. That takes a couple of seconds. Stay clear of patient, analyzing. It will then advise, shock advised or no shock advised. If the AED advises a shock, you just have to ensure that nobody else is touching the casualty and follow the instructions. Shock advised, stay clear of patient. Once that shock has been delivered, yes, they are going to do that little jump. You've probably seen it on TV. The AED will then tell you to continue chest compressions and you simply do as it says. You will now need to perform two minutes of chest compressions. Two minutes is a long time doing chest compressions. They are hard work. 
If you feel yourself getting tired, it's absolutely fine to swap with somebody else. Think of yourself as a Formula One pit crew. This has to be in sync. So you will tell the other person, I'm getting tired, please take over. You will then count down, come off the chest, and they will go straight on, minimizing interruption. Right, three, two, one. At the end of two minutes, the AED will say, stand clear of patient, analyzing patient. It will then advise a shock or not advise a shock. But like I said, now that the AED is working, you just have to follow the instructions. This process will repeat every two minutes. For those of you who saw our previous video, I spoke about the three reasons that you may stop performing chest compressions. Now those three reasons still stand in this case. The first one being that you get a positive response from your treatment, in which case you just reassess, tell the 999 call handler and act accordingly. The second reason is that the emergency services have arrived and they're there to take over. The third reason to stop is that you are just too exhausted to continue chest compressions. Now that doesn't really apply in this circumstance because there are two rescuers. So the best scenario is for you to swap regularly so that you can continue. So thank you for watching this series of films. I hope you've got a lot out of them. We've gone from how to assess the patient using the doctor's ABC method. We've gone through how to actually perform chest compressions and why we do it. And we have talked about how to use a pad or a public access defibrillator and how essential it is that if there is more than one rescuer, somebody should always go and retrieve that defib. So please check back regularly on the link shown. Firstly, to refresh on what we've learned so far, but secondly, we will be adding more videos which will hopefully help you be able to potentially save a life. Remember, we can't fly without you.